In this video, you will learn about the working of the water level pressure switches or sensors used in the front and top load washing machines. I have placed two types of pressure switches here on this front load washing machine. Nowadays, companies are using electronic control sensors. Both have the same purpose, but the working is different. The electronic control sensor is frequency based. But these mechanical switches have switches inside them, which I will elaborate you further in the video. This is a top load washing machine that has this water sensor installed in it. I will explain all these four types of sensors placed on the table. First of all, let's understand the mechanism of these simple pressure switches. This sensor has three terminals on the top, and how could we do its wiring? You can see numbers on it. This terminal has one written on it. This terminal has four written on it. The terminal on the upside of the sensor has six written on it. The one numbered terminal is the common terminal. Install the main wire here, whether the phase or neutral wire. When the air pressure comes inside the pressure sensor, its mechanism goes upwards, which I will show you further in the video. The mechanism inside is very interesting, through which the one number point meets with the 4 and 6. The electricity here passes through the 4 and 6 terminals, this way, the flow switch starts to work. On this 6 number terminal, the wire installed is for the PCB, through which the PCB will know that the washing machine has taken the required water to start the next function of the machine. The 4 number terminal is used to pass electricity to the heating element, the heating element will not work until and unless the water is not filled to the selected level by the consumer. Whenever the fourth number point gets bad, the heating element will also not work due to the carbon on the points. Three adjustments are installed in it. See these nuts. Through these, water flow and the switching time is controlled. Now let's talk about this water flow switch, which has four terminals. These three terminals function the same as I told you before. The difference is only in this switch terminal. The terminal is numbered as 2 in this water flow switch. The 2 and 1 number terminals are joined when the machine has no water or air. The 2 and the 1 numbered terminals are then called the common terminal. The 1 number terminal connects with 4 and 6 numbered terminals when the machine is filled with water, and at the same time, the 2 number terminal is disconnected from the 1 number terminal. This type of water level works as a three-pole switch where two functions are achieved at the same time. Now I will tell you how the mechanism inside the water flow switch works. I have already opened a water flow switch. When I open its top cover, it has a mechanism inside it. When I open this, it has a rubber and a piece of plastic installed inside it. The plastic has a very thin and narrow hole inside it, the air pressure comes inside this hole. The air after entering this chamber, this rubber starts coming upward. The rubber is airtight, then the air inside the rubber generates pressure and pushes the rubber upward. The tip of the plastic is placed inside this hole of the water level switch. When the rubber starts to go upward, this mechanism also gets pressed by the tip, and the time comes when the switches join with each other. How do they join with one another? Let me explain this as well. Watch carefully when I press the mechanism. The switches are connecting together. This point connects with terminal 6, as the 6th number could not be seen beneath this mechanism. This point is connected with terminal 4. And this way, it functions. Now I will test the water level sensor with a multimeter. I have attached the black testing probe of the multimeter with one numbered terminal. The red testing probe with the two numbered terminal. We are getting the continuity value on the multimeter, which means it has no air pressure. In the same way, I will check the 6th number terminal and the 4th numbered terminal. Both of the terminals are not showing any continuity. Now I have connected the testing probe with the 6th numbered terminal. I will put some air pressure inside the sensor and then observe it. As soon as I filled the air pressure inside the sensor, the continuity on the 6th numbered terminal has started to show up. Now I have connected the probe with the 4th numbered terminal. See. It is also showing continuity. The heating element wire is installed here. The resistance value has changed here. I have connected the probe with terminal number 2, which has no continuity. This is how to test a mechanical water level sensor, and this is how it works. Now I will tell you how to test this type of water level switch. Because this is an electronic switch, I have this another type of electronic water level sensor which has two wires. 
The function and working of both these electronic water levels are the same. The difference is only that it has not a third terminal in it. The terminal on the right side has more distance than the center and the left terminal. Why is this so? Before telling you this, I will tell you the numbering written on it. Terminal number one is this one. The two number terminal is this, and the three number terminal is on the left. So now let's test it with a multimeter with an ohm meter on the multimeter. First, I am checking terminal numbers 1 and 3. See, the multimeter shows us 22.4 ohms, which means that the sensor on these points is OK. The next terminals to check is 1 and 2 number. The multimeter showed not show any value on its display. The multimeter showed a value, and then the value was gone. This means the terminal points of these sensors are OK as capacitors are installed with these terminals. The DC capacitor blocks the DC voltage when the DC source is applied to it. Now I am checking the second and third terminals. If the multimeter shows a value and disappears, it means the terminal point is OK. If the continuity keeps showing on these terminal points, the capacitor inside is bad. Now we will see how it is diagrammed internally. Let me make the diagram of this water level sensor first according to its terminal point. It has a coil inside it. This is the number one terminal of this pressure switch on the diagram. This point is terminal number three. This point is the number two terminal. The two number is the ground wire terminal. The voltages are on both the one and three terminals as VCC. The three number terminal has a capacitor attached to it, which are non-polarized ceramic capacitor. Through these capacitors, the frequency is controlled. It is grounded with the third numbered terminal. The same is for the one number terminal as well. This is how it functions. Now let's test this kind of electronic water level sensor. It has only two terminals. You have to check its ohms through the multimeter, as it will show continuity. The multimeter shows a 16 ohms value of the terminals which means this electronic sensor is fine. But if its continuity disconnect, it means it is faulty. The diagram of this electronic sensor is something like this. It has only two terminals. If you have, remove it from your washing machine, you will have to fit the connection the same as before because the company has programmed it according to those wires. It not works if the connection gets wrong. One side is ground, and the other side is VCC. It has a capacitor installed between these terminals. The capacitor is installed to generate the frequency. I have opened this water level sensor, and let's explore what is inside it. This is its cover which had the pipe installed in it. The tiny hole of the sensor is made here for the air pressure. The air pressure pushes this rubber. The rubber seal is installed with this one as well. This is the ferrite core. This is the thing in it through which its frequency is changed. It is a low magnetized core through which the frequency changes. Spring is inside it. The spring is attached to the top of the ferrite core, which goes back and forth when pressure is applied. Two capacitors are installed here, as I showed you in the diagram. The coil is inside this plastic. Due to air pressure, it moves upward, then the frequency of the sensor changes. Then the washing machine control board will come to know how much water has filled inside the machine. And this way, it controls the water level according to the level set by the consumer through this frequency. I have opened this flow switch as well. The same as I showed you before. The hole for the air pressure is made here. It also has a rubber seal and a plastic cover. It also has a ferrite core on top of the plastic, smaller than the other water level sensor. But the working is the same. It also has a spring inside it. We can also see the coil with a ceramic capacitor installed in it. This is installed inside an electronic water level sensor and we have explored it. In the previous part of the video, I told you that the water level sensors terminal has a distance between them. The distance is for not making the connector fit in the wrong position. For example, if you try to insert the connector in the reverse position, it will never insert. Due to this distance, you can't connect it in reverse. Now I will test the frequency of the electronic water level sensor. The washing machine is also switched on. 2.83 volts are showing on the multimeter. I have attached the black probe on the left side and the red probe on the right side of the water level sensor. 
I have also attached the oscilloscope wires as well. The frequency on the oscilloscope is 26.53 kHz. Now I am going to change it gradually. I am attaching the pipe on the water level sensor to make air pressure inside it through the syringe I have set up. As I pumped air inside the water level sensor, the frequency changed to 22.47 kHz. This is how the water level sensor works in the washing machines. And this is the way to check them. This much is for this video. I will see you at the next one. Click on the left or right thumbnail on the screen to watch our next videos, and subscribe, it is absolutely free. Thank you.